this is Nancy with On Point Dash TV and Quilting with Nancy. I would like to welcome you to a uh, YouTube Live. We're going to do a video today on making a pineapple log cabin. Now this is done paper piecing using the It's So Emma patterns and I'll tell you a lot more about this coming up. But before I start, I would like your assistance with something. We have a lot of people that have subscribed to our YouTube channel. At this point, this is the beginning of May 2020. We have about 30, I'm sorry, it's the beginning of June 2020. If you could only see Athena's face when I said that, that was hilarious. 2020. And we have about 37,000 people on our YouTube channel, which is so amazing. I can't even believe that number. It blows my mind. Thank you so much. For subscribing to the channel but I have found over the last six months or so that it's very hard for me to communicate with the people that follow us on YouTube because there's not really a good communication feel now if I were so inclined and was so smart enough to be able to do it and I'm not I would do a really cool newsletter I, I think that'd be so cool to have a newsletter but honestly I just don't have time and I just don't have the skills to do such a thing. And I know a lot of you are out there going, seriously, how stupid is she that she can't figure out how to do an email? Anyway, I would like to suggest that you join our Facebook page. We do not post a gazillion things every day. It's not something that is going to totally slam your Facebook page. I know some people don't even go on Facebook. But if you would like to know more about me, the team, On Point, quilting, sharing of projects that you do, I would like you to like our Facebook page. If you were to like our Facebook page, we could just do a lot more communicating back and forth. So to encourage you to do that, I would like to give away something. I would like to give away my new Great Basics book. This is the book that we've been working through the series on. I think we've published maybe five episodes so far. We have about four more to go. But anyway, this is the book on the Great Basics. If you are an international fan, I could send you the um, Great Basics book in an ebook format. And these are both available for purchase on our website, on Point Dash TV. I also have another thing to give away. It's one of my pin cushions. So this is my fabulous pin cushion. I have a pattern and kits. The kits are all made with wool fabrics that I felted and or dyed. And I've got a lot of new colors. So the green is a new color. The blue black plaid, a brighter purple, the peachy color. And then I also have the three what that I've had for some time, the black and red um, herringbone, the really, because this is a very heavy, um, red wool so this one's even bigger and then a dark purple so if you were to go and join our facebook page so looking on facebook for on point dash tv and quilting with nancy so you need to look for those things to make sure that you're subscribing to the um correct page or at least my page and when you're looking if you see this really fun colorful triangle there that's what you'll find. That's our logo. So you'll find that there. So please go to our Facebook page, join it so that I can start um, talking with you a little bit more. Now let's get busy on our project. So let me get some of these out of the way. How do they win? Oh, thank you, Athena. So if you would go to our Facebook page and if you write a comment as of where you are from. So are you from South Africa? Are you from Michigan? Are you from Ireland? How about Nova Scotia? I was just watching a movie. Anyway, so if you were to put in the comment on Facebook where you are from, then you will be in the drawing. And we will do the drawing on June 20th. So that is next Saturday. So June 20, 2020, that's when the drawing will be done on midnight Michigan time. And then we'll do the drawing and I will let you know who won on Facebook and I'll contact you via messenger. So you don't need to leave your email or anything like that. I'll be find a way to contact you. All right. Did I do that right? Okay. Now we're ready to start working. So on with our project for the day. So let's put this to the side. We're going to work on the so it's so emma patterns so she's come out with these cool new patterns for pineapple log cabins there's the 12 inch and the six inch these are both available for purchase on the website firesidequilts.com that's owned by my friend laura and 
and she does any of the supplies that I have, that's where you can pick them up. So also available on her website are the fabrics that I'm going to use. So this one that I started is done with this jelly roll. It is a jelly roll called Misty from Clothworks. So you see all the beautiful shades of blue and going to the purple. So with this set, because the 12 inch pineapple is pretty much made for use with a two and a half inch jelly roll or design roll, whatever you want to call them, this is the one that I got from Laura to make this. And then I used just this really fun polka dot, this gray polka dot as my background fabric. So that's what I'm going to continue with today. But I want to give you another idea too. This is another colorway that Laura had. Okay, these really pretty pinks and some golds and stuff. And with those for the background, check this out. I was at my local quilt shop, which is Smith Owen Sewing Center, and they've got some new fabrics. Some of these are from Riley Blake. I don't know who all of them are from, but just something about these fabrics. I mean, would you look at how fun that is with the little ice cream truck and the white background and then the animals. And this one kind of that is, a, I don't know, an orange peel. But look at how those kind of coordinate. Now, imagine those with these colors for the log cabin. So these would be my background. I would mix them all up, maybe one block per fat quarter, and then use these for the color. So I just want you to think about a lot of different ways that you could do this, different ideas and colorways. And I love the idea of doing it with these printed ones. So what you're going to notice is that there is not enough of one color. So in this particular jelly roll, there are four of this dark blue, four of this dark purple, four of the brighter blue. So the colors, there's only four of each strip. So to make the pineapple log cabin, I want you to look really close at the colors. The colors are not all exactly the same in each block but they really glow together. So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna just use these, cut these um, jelly rolls and change up the colors a little bit. And I've got a little, le a, pro a little layout that I'll show you a little bit later, okay? So let's get started. So step one, as you're opening up the pineapple page, oh, there's the layout. I knew it was someplace really practical and easy to find. With one jelly roll, you can make a quilt, you can make 12 blocks, the quilt would end up 50 inches by 60 inches using that jelly roll pack and you need two yards of a background fabric. You could also do with two jelly roll packs, you could make a quilt that would be approximately a double or a twin. It would be 74 by 86 with your borders on using two jelly rolls and four yards of background fabric. And so I did design this in EQ and I love the way that the colors just work. They just kind of glow. The different colors in each block kind of make it I don't know, twinkle? Does that sound too silly? Yes, I think it does. Okay, so with the So Emma, there's going to be 40, let me double check this, 42 sheets per pad. For the quilt that I'm making, I only needed 12. If you wanted to make it twice as big, that's 24. There is a lot of papers in here. They're all printed and they're all the size that you need, a really nice weight that you can see through. And then here, is where she gives you the instructions for cutting. So you would take your time and cut out everything that you would need. So all the instructions that you need are right here in the um, pineapple pad also, okay? So starting with the paper that I have, here's my little box of stuff. We're gonna start with step one. Jelly roll away. I'm going to move this a little bit closer to me. Let's talk a little bit about the tools that I'm going to use. I'm going to use an add a quarter ruler, but I am not going to use the six inch. The six inch is what I would use when I'm doing paper piecing on a smaller scale. For this project, I'm going to use the 12 inch add a quarter ruler. That's because these seams are longer. Many of them are longer than the six inches. Could you do it with just a six inch and a quarter ruler? Yes, you can. Totally up to you, but the 12 inch is gonna make it just a little bit easier. We're gonna use a small rotary cutter. So this is the 28 millimeter rotary cutter from Olfa. 
Here is, this is just a piece of cardboard. Now this happens to be the seam guide, um, the seam guide cardboard that comes with the seams from um, Guidelines for Quilting. But honestly, it just needs to be a piece of cardboard, okay? Nothing fancy there. I'm going to also use a glue stick. Now this is not a fancy glue stick. This is the Yoohoo glue stick, U-H-U. -U. This is a water soluble, acid-free glue stick. I want it to be permanent or repositionable. It honestly wouldn't matter, but I'll explain why you wanna have that in a little bit. Then we're gonna use some Mary Ellen's Best Press. I'm gonna talk about the new Misty bottles and some new designs. And last but not least, we're going to use our Clover mini iron so this is the clover mini iron that gets very hot it's really fabulous love using this for paper piecing but that little stand that it comes with is pretty useful useless so i like to use my really cool big mug using a big mug like that is going to keep it safe so that you're not going to burn yourself or the things that you're working on i'm going to take my fabrics put them away for now this is my little cutting mat that i'm going to use this is a little leftover piece of a cutting mat. You know how you have your cutting mats and sometimes you might put it in your car and when you put it in your car, it gets all melty or you keep it on its side and it gets bent and it's bent for the rest of its life. When that happens, and it will happen, take and cut that down just into a nice convenient size. This is the one that I usually, when I'm doing paper piecing, I'm gonna take this and all of my cutting is gonna be to the left of my sewing machine. Now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to be doing my cutting here on the table. But just know that normally, I actually go over here on the left so I can sew, cut, sew, cut, sew, cut. But for now, we are going to work over here. I'll be working, doing some of the pressing on my wool, um, wool mat. This is the wool pressing mat that I love so much that I also have the big size that covers my large big board. Okay. I think that covers all the tools. I have my fabrics already pre-cut, just like the Solema pattern tells me to do. And that means I'm starting with the large square that's in the center. Flip your paper over using your glue stick. I can see, and I'm not sure if you can see through the camera, but I can see the little square, the lines. Can you see through it? Nope, can't. Athena says you can't see through it, so you're just gonna have to trust me. On the center, I'm gonna put a little glue down so that I can secure my center square. We're gonna come back to the glue stick quite a bit more. Now, looking from this side, okay, can you see through it now? Yep. All right, now we can see that it's not positioned properly. Do you see that this line, there's about an inch of fabric above it. Come down here, there's a smidge of fabric below it. So I need to position that fabric so that it is centered on the square. So I'm going to come back. Remember what I have to do? See, showing you things like this is so that you'll know that when you do it, you're not the only one. Let's try this again. I'm going to pick it up to do it. After this, you never have to pick it up again. A little bit more this way. I think that should do it. Let's look through the paper one more time. <coughs> All right, now we can see that the fabric is evenly spaced over the top of the number one square, which is upside down, okay? So now we can go back to our cutting board. <coughs> Excuse me. Cap my, there we go. All right, this is gonna be a little bit silly. Hey, Bill. Could you give me a glass of water, please? Yeah. All right, that's my husband, the most helpful man on the planet. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the top. <coughs> Remember, my fabric is glued to the bottom. So now, using my piece of cardboard, I'm gonna leave the colored side up so you can see. I'm gonna line it up with a line, my next sole line. Then fold back onto the cardboard using my add a quarter ruler. Now keep in mind that add a quarter ruler has that little lip on it. Thank you, sweetie. Has that little lip on it. Lay that down so that that little lip now touches or snuggles with the fold of the paper and the little piece of cardboard. Open your blade 
and cut. Right. Now, spin it around and do it on the opposite side. So I did it here at the number three. I'm gonna do the same thing at the number two. I'm not gonna go all the way around yet and it'll make sense why once I get there. And cut. <coughs> Excuse my cough, I don't know where that tickle came from. All right, so now it has cut so that it is a quarter of an inch past the line on two sides. Now it's time to place my first fabric. My first fabric is my lightest fabric in this particular design. I'm gonna lay it down. Now this is a jelly roll, so you know that you know. oftentimes they have that little jig jaggy on the side, which makes them so perfect for paper piecing because you're just gonna place it here on the edge and you can go to the jig jaggy, past the jig jaggy, it's not gonna matter. Now, for the case of the video, I am gonna put a pin way over here, just so that I can pick this up and get this to my sewing machine without it moving. I do not normally do that. So we're gonna move the table out of the way. I'm gonna grab my next piece of fabric and we're gonna to come to the sewing machine. So there, I got that flipped over. I can look by folding this up that everything is still positioned properly. <coughs> Excuse me. So on my sewing machine, I'm working with a neutral colored thread. This is a Superior Masterpiece 50 weight thread. My stitch length is a 2.0. You always want to make your stitch length a little bit smaller when doing paper piecing. And I like to do paper piecing with an open toe applique foot so that I can see the line that I am sewing on. Now, can you do paper piecing without the open toe? Yep, but let's make it easy on ourselves. Let's use an open toe so that you can see where you're sewing. So I'm gonna start sewing on that line. Sew all the way to the end. When I get to the end, now this is my fast sewing machine so I can make it so the needle will stay down but in the case of this, I'm gonna make it so the needle stays up because with paper piecing, you don't really pivot. Then I'm gonna cut my threads. I have one piece sewed on. So now I'm gonna sew the other piece on while I am here. So just position this one again, just for the video. I'll put a pin here. You can put a, video, a pin in normally, it'd be totally up to you. Flip it over. I can see, if I fold this back, I can see everything is still lined up the way it's supposed to be. And honestly, with paper piecing, it's always those first few that are always the most difficult. So then it starts up, my smaller stitch length, gonna sew to the end. Oh, you know what? I can use my thread cutter, I remember that. If you have a thread cutter, use it. If you don't, don't. But you know what? My thread just broke, so hold on one second, please. All right, you want to see something? All right, something's up with my thread. Something's caught on something. All right, stay right where you're at because I want to show you something cool with my faff icon. When I thread, whenever you're in doubt, if you thread, break a thread or whatever, threading your machine is always a good thing. But watch this. Put that there. Put this over here. Hands free. My hands are not touching it. Dun, da, da, da. My machine is threaded. And if you are not all applauding in awe right now, I will be shocked. Because the first time I saw that, I did that. So, all right, back to our ironing board. So, back up. Thank you. So, when I do my ironing is when I cut off all my threads. I do not like to have all those threads sitting on my piece. So, I'm always going to cut them off. Take off my pin cushion. Now it's time to press. Using our Clover mini iron, I'm gonna press these seams. Now, could I do this with my large iron? Well, of course I could. But for the sake of the video, I didn't wanna be using the large iron because it's just so clunky. And this little guy is just so doggone convenient. He does, done, that's it. I don't have to use the large iron. Now is the trick with the glue stick. You saw how it already worked for keeping your initial square fabric in place, but these pieces are so big and I just found it very cumbersome to keep them in place. I just took a swipe of a glue stick and that helped hold that fabric 
in place so that while I was positioning my next piece, it did not move around. Now, will I do the glue stick on a smaller paper piece project? Probably not. I've never thought to do it before. This is the first time it ever occurred to me to use a glue stick to make those pieces stand in place. Now, sometimes I'll do paper piecing with freezer paper when it's my own design, and then you can press the fabric to the waxy side or whatever that side is of the freezer paper. Well, this doesn't have that. I found that if I just use that glue stick, and not a lot of it, just enough, it helped hold it in place. Do you see how it's not flopping down on me, right? Okay, now it's ready for our next seams. So now I'm going to take my cardboard again, line it up on my next seam. So I did the one between two and three, now I'm gonna go between three and four. Line the cardboard up on the line, fold it back. And so this is why I like having the extra long at a quarter because it can do the entire cut at one time. Just like before, I'm gonna spin it around and I'm gonna cut that other side. So you're gonna work kind of on opposite sides, you're gonna sew those opposite side seams and then go to the other leftover seams, I guess. I was gonna say the other opposite sides, but that really didn't make any sense, all right? So now these two are sewn on, it's time to sew these. So when I come here to my, my fabric side, I'm gonna again take that same size, so it's gonna be a smaller strip Gonna center it up so you see how it's just a little bit over that seam, a little bit over that seam. Can put a pin in here. And let's pin the second one in place as long as we are here. So just lay this down. And I don't know if this would work with the six inch pineapple that I showed you. With the six inch pineapple too, you're gonna notice that it uses a one and a half inch strip. There. It uses a one and a half inch strip instead of a two and a half. Could you use a jelly roll? Yeah, but it'd be kind of a waste of fabric. So instead, you can use those pre-cuts. There are, there's not a lot of them, not in all the collections like the um, jelly roll sizes, but there are collections for one and a half. And then, you know, lo and behold, you could cut your own one and a half if you so chose. Okay, so now I've got these two laid down in place and we're gonna go to our sewing machine to sew them up. So looking underneath, making sure, up. Oh, see my fabric flipped. Don't want my fabric to flip. If you fold that back, you can see that everything is lined up against it, okay? So going into place, starting at the edge, sewing to the end, not going past the line, just stop at the seam line, cut your thread, go to the other side, Make sure nothing is moved. There's my fabrics, they're all the where, where they should be. And go to the end. Cut my thread, back to the cutting board. So Jean, Athena's getting her exercise today. Back and forth and back and forth. All right, um, no, my scissors, there they are. There. Cut my threads off like to keep a little pile over here. Usually I'm a little bit more organized in where all my little piles of stuff are so that I don't have threads hanging around all over the place. Although quilters come with strings attached. Everybody knows that. It's kind of like owning cats. You're going to have cat hair on you. There's just no way around it. Well, unless you had one of those ones with no hair and those are just odd. Sorry. Somebody out there owns one. That was bad. They're so adorable. Okay. Wow. So now we're going to press again. Whoops. Using my clover. Do you see? I mean, that really is a very nice press. It's a beautiful crease. Now, some people like to use um, like little pressing rollers. I just don't find them to hold as well, but it's up to you if it works for you. When I'm doing smaller paper piecing pieces, I oftentimes will just use my thumb, just take my thumb and go right on the seam. But when it's a larger piece, I don't find that that works as well but whatever floats your boat. I like my little clover mini iron. It works really great for this. After I press, then I'm gonna glue it down, just a swipe of glue and a swipe of glue. Now we'll flip it over and go for our next seams. So our next ones are seven, six and seven. So again, using the cardboard, 
lay it on the next seam line, pull back, and that's what that, so that glue was sticking a smidge, not a big deal, to just peel it off, tuck it in, cut. While I'm here, flip it around, cut off my second one. So she has numbered them so that you're going, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So back and forth on both sides. It makes it really, really nice and convenient. When it, see there, the glue is sticking it, just pull it away like that. And use your add a quarter. I tell you, I didn't like paper piecing until the company that I can't remember the name of, oh, CM Designs came up with this ruler. You changed my world. Everything for paper piecing became so much easier. Now flip it back to the other side, and now we're going to our next size fabric. Lay this down, and this time just center it. So I'm centering it on the fabric that I can see. I don't have to look to see if it's lined up on the underside. You can just look at your fabric. It's I'm positioning this one between, so we center it up, pin them in place, and go to sew. All right. So we're gonna sew these two, and then by the magic of television, we're gonna go to some that I already have done. So. to the other side, flip that up, make sure everything's still back in, lined as they should be. You know what I must say, I, I said that I don't normally put pins in, and I don't, but I like putting the pins in. That's really holding it very nicely for me. I don't know why I didn't actually do that before, so now I've learned something new. Put pins in. Okay, and cut. Now back to the cutting board, and I want to show you a little trick. Have you ever, and I know you have, so don't fib with me, when you were sewing your paper piecing together, that maybe you accidentally, the fabric got done like that, you know, so then you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I have to take out that entire seam. I would like you to show you the cheater's method for a seam that's gone bad. It's called scotch tape. Plain old scotch tape, nothing special here. But let's say I have to take this entire line of stitching out. Well, my stitching line is a little bit small. Yes, I can use my seam ripper, but it's the stitches are so small that it makes it kind of hard to take that out with the paper. Take a piece of scotch tape over top of the stitching line. Now flip it over and you can peel away what you just stitched from the paper, but the scotch tape is holding the paper together. So you've not lost the integrity of the paper. Then using your fancy dancy seam ripper, you can take those stitches out so much easier because they are not attached to the paper any longer. And even if they were, if you were gonna do this when it's attached to the paper, those little stitches are gonna make that paper wanna just come right apart. So tip, when you've made a mistake, and we all make them, use some scotch tape on the paper side, then you can just pull the stitching away from it and then take the stitching out and then you can continue. And then you will sew right through the scotch tape Pressing won't be an issue because you'll be pressing from this side, so don't even have to really worry about the pressing. So I'm going to now jump to some pieces that I've already done. Oh, there they are. Oh. All right, so we're getting near the end on these. Got this one that I still need to do. So we've got, got to get myself organized a little bit here. Okay, I've got one more to stitch on here because I want to show you how you can chain piece when you're paper piecing. So this little guy's in line. I'm going to flip him over and sew this one seam. Pick up your paper. Make sure everything's still in line. Stitch. Now one thing I do like to do that I've not mentioned so far is I do like to do a little bit of a 
a manual locking stitch. And what I mean by that is when I come to the end of this stitching line, instead of just cutting it off right there, hold everything, literally hold the paper. So it took three stitches in one place. That is a manual locking stitch. It took those three stitches. That means it's pretty well locked up. So it's gonna be very, very secure. So going back to our ironing board. Okay, so I wanna show you just a couple of how I might do it with chain piecing. Normally, you cannot chain piece paper piecing projects because everything starts and stops kind of, you know, in the middle of the project. So you can't chain piece, but you can chain piece paper piecing when the lines that you are sewing go all the way to the end of the block. So it's going to start at an end of a block. It's going to end at the end of the block. So that means I can start chain piecing. So I, what I will do, excuse me, is I will get enough ready so I get all, you know, I don't know, five, six, ten blocks ready to this point with the point where it can be doing ch some chain piecing and then do the chain piecing. It's kind of bumpy. Oh, I'm ironing on top of the other block. I'm like, why is it so bumpy? Do, 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 do. Okay, so that is pressed. Come on. Don't want to keep clicking that, but if I don't, I know Athena's going to burn, and then she's going to scream, and then someone's going to say, there was a young lady screaming on the video. That was so annoying. So, anyways. All right. Glue these down. Okay, if that just jiggled, it's because Athena just laughed. Okay. There. All right. So, these are all glued down. My one below it is glued down. So, I've sewn these. Let's get these ones underneath out of the way. I've sewn both of these blocks to the point where the next lines on both of them are on the outside of the design. So now I'm gonna trim these just like I've been doing all along. Ooh, that one's kind of crinkly and funny. Let me fix that, please. There. All right, so just like we've been doing, we're gonna fold on the and at this point, because the designs, the lines are so far away from each other, you could actually do all four at once. You could trim all four of them at once and then go all the way around it. But I'm not going to just because we need, I don't want you to have to watch the entire step-by-step -step process. All right, so this is my one block. That one's trimmed. My next... Design fabric is an all gray. That would be this one. It's a little bit longer. No, it's not all gray. Jeepers, creepers, somebody save me. It is, I think it's a stark purple one on this one and maybe another color on the other. So I'm gonna position that. And the other side. set this one over here so it will be ready to sew and then go to the other one same idea folding back to cut right on the line cutting all that excess off I did wonder if there was a way that I could save these little triangles okay that was silly yes of course you could save those little triangles but it's a matter of time would you save those little triangles for you that make little miniature quilts sure you would there's always something you can do with it that and I believe this one because I've got kind of sort of three colorways going there it is this one's supposed to be done with the more of a bright purple color pin him in place there we go now we're gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna show you how you can chain piece these okay so you're going to start just like normal, flipping it over, okay? Everything is lined up. Flip, fold him back so you can see all the papers, are, all the fabrics are lined up. And when you start sewing this, start sewing off the design. I'm not starting on the line. I'm actually starting at that little bit of a quarter of inch edge it has. 
and sew all the way through. My pin is a little bit close there. Get him out of there. Sew to the end. Now I'm gonna put my needle in the down position. Get my next piece ready. Fold this back. Make sure my fabrics are still lined up that nothing's gone off center or anything. And I can chain piece my next stitch. So just go right on through and chain piece. I'm gonna flip it up one more time. Make sure I kind of feel that it went offline. Here, line that up. There, back lined up again. Now, if I were doing a lot of blocks at this point, I could just pick up and put my next chain pieced one out. If I were only doing a couple of blocks, just reach to the back, cut off the piece that's behind. Now bring it to the front. Whoa. There. Okay, line up your fabrics and continue to chain piece. So you can just do chain piecing when you're doing paper piecing at the last seams. You can't do it when it's at the center, but you can certainly do it when you're at your last seams. You get to the end of this one and cut this off, and I'll finish that a little bit later. Now backing up again. Get those out of the way. Let's go to our next pieces. So we've got these guys. All right. So this is the one that is completely done. And what I do at this point before I trim it, now you're not going to really see this happen because at this point I've already done this, but on this piece, this would normally be bigger. It would have the rough edges are around it. That's when you want to use some Mary Ellen spray sizing to stiffen this up, all right? You need to stiffen this up because do you see these edges here? These are bias edges. The gray are all straight of the grain edges, but anything that's on the edges here from the strips, those are bias edges. So I will spray size the entire block. Now that's nothing new. I spray size the entire blocks all the time. And if you ever watch any of my videos, you see that I spray size all the time. I like my fabrics to be very, very stiff so that when I'm working on them, things go together better. And when I'm quilting it, it stays in place. Everything's a little bit stiff when you're doing the quilting. I love that. I do the top and the backing for that. So you're going to use the Mary Ellen spray sizing, but I want to introduce to you something a little bit different. This is, there, this is a Mr. Bottle. Now these Mr. Bottles come in different ones, so this is one from a quilterscorner.com. You can purchase all of these on firesidequilts.com, but they say funny things. So we've got the Iron Maiden, I know that's what I look like, although I don't think I've ever worn a skirt that looked like a double wedding ring. Here we have, friends don't let friends go to quilt shops alone, just because it's funner when you're hanging out with your friends at a quilt shop or a quilt show, if we ever get to go back to one of those again. And nothing like a little color therapy to brighten your day. So you can get these fun designs like this, or you can get just the clear one. And my intention on this is I'm going to have my friend Gina cut out a, um, a vinyl adhesive. Please excuse the video. It's bouncing a little bit. I have a very large cat. He's a 25-pound cat that is rubbing up against something. You know, and she's trying her best to stay still. So, RC, go away. No, he's not even slightly interested. So anyway, if you get the clear one, you could use a vinyl adhesive and adhere it down so that then it's your very own design. So Gina, I wanted to say quilting with Nancy, okay? So what I like about these is I want you to notice the difference. This is the spray. Let me get my big iron. Okay, gotta get pull the big iron off of this. This is an Oliso iron, the pink one that they don't make anymore, okay? Now the most, they're all yellow is the one I like. So here is the spray of the Mary Ellen's Best Press Bottle. It's not a bad spray. It's a pretty good spray. I had to pump that three times. With the mister, it actually is vacuum packed in there. I'm gonna hold it down one time to get that exact spray. It also makes it last a little bit longer. I don't know why, but it does. So these little Mr. Bottles are really very nice. Not only do they look cool, 
They're not as much of a pumping action as when you've got just a regular pump. Yep, you've got a pump, pump, pump. Seriously, have I ever found a problem with that? No, I can pump, pump, pump if I need to. But when I was introduced to this Mr. Bottle, I thought, okay, that is pretty cool. It makes my spray sizing last a little bit longer. I don't have to pump, pump, pump. I just hold it down for one time to get that same type of surface cover. So just kind of think about that. And like I said, they're available on that um, firesidequilts.com. So I'm pressing this now completely dry. Make sure it's completely dry. And to do that, I will have to see here on the back side. I can see that the sizing came to the back size. Now let's say that you had done the tape trick because you maybe had made an error. When you're doing the pressing, just try to avoid the tape. If you just go over it a little bit, it's not going to be a problem. Just don't set your iron onto that scotch tape. Get this all dry, and once it's dry, we're ready to take our paper off. Got to be completely dry, too. Don't, like, cut your... Don't try and rush it. Take your time. Don't cut yourself short is what I was trying to say. All right. Okay. So taking off the paper. This is so easy. You fold back the paper, crease it again, and tear it out. Then when you've got to get this seam out from underneath, if you see how it just kind of comes out right from underneath that seam, fold it and peel it off. Flip to the next one. I'm wanting to get to one that I can see that there's a little bit of glue sticking because somebody's going to ask me if that glue is going to leave any paper behind. But I'm not. There are some that I would must have put more glue on and it did leave a little bit of the paper behind but nothing that was so bad that I thought it was going to crinkle in the quilt. So you're going to take all of those papers off the entire piece and then you're going to assemble them together so i've got a little trick here doo, 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 doo. all right if we look at the back side of the piece that i have been working at you're going to see that the seams on this block just the first two corner seams do not go out when you're paper piecing your seams end up all going out to the outside of the block these I repressed so they were going in so that I could have that seam butt together perfectly. So I'm going to show you how I do that here. So, And you want to try to follow that along, always looking at the back of your previous blocks to make sure that they're lining up properly. So this is what that looks like. When I'm coming time to put these two pieces together, you see how the seams are both going in the same direction? I don't want that to happen. That seam will be too bulky and I'll never get that intersection right. So what you wanna do is fold one of the intersections. So now one's going down, one's going up, and then put a pin in place to make that stay where you wanted it. So, oops, I just did that on the wrong corner. Let's flip this over. There, same idea. So here, seams are both going in the same direction. Sorry, I'm confusing everybody. Fold this one down, then pin it in place. Come to the next seam, do the same thing. Fold it down so that those seams can butt together beautifully right there and pin it in place. All right. So now we're gonna go and sew that seam together. So to do this, I wanna do one of two things. I wanna change my foot for sure. And I'm gonna use my quarter inch foot this time. It's pretty good foot for this machine, I like it. Um, or you could use your regular foot and your seam guide. Use whatever works for you. Okay, there. So starting here, I should have a leader. I'm gonna be real careful, hold my tail. All right, it worked good. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna sew over pins. So if this scares you, close your eyes. Right now, okay, there. Now I'm gonna get to the next one. Slow down, scary situation coming, gonna sew over the pin. I sew over pins all the time. I always have, once in a while I hit a pin, and once in a while I have to take my machine in to get it tuned up. Well, truth is I'm gonna get it tuned up any year, so it really has never caused me a problem. Coming here to the end, match them up. There. 
back to the ironing board for our final step. Things go crashing everywhere as I throw things around. All right. So now when we take these pins out, we want to completely press the seam in the direction that I had just done it man with my fingers. So take your iron and be very careful because there are bias edges on here. There's one and there's two. Now this, the second one that I did, get a little bit of steam on there. This seam is a little bit bulky because it's folding in onto itself, but that's the only way to get these to line up properly. So when you're working and putting the blocks together, you want to look at which way the seams need to press one way or the other, and then completely press them with your iron, and you should be able to make the entire quilt alternate on, off, on, off, on, off. And in the case of this pineapple quilt, you only have to do it to the two outside squares. Ooh, and do you see there's a little bit of paper on there? I knew I'd find some. There's that little bit of paper left from the glue stick. Not a problem. It's not going to cause it. It's like a little sliver of paper. Not going to bother me. Ooh, I can get a little bit more off. There. Okay. All right. So this little guy is together. And I would press him in one direction, and you see how pretty he is. So I'm going to make this one into the 12 blocks, so three across, four down, to make the beautiful pineapple. So again, the pineapple papers, 12 inch, 6 inch from It's So Emma, can be purchased on my friend Laura's website, that is firesidequilts.com. She also has the jelly rolls there, so if you're interested in getting the jelly roll so that you can get started right away choosing, and then all you have to do is choose your background fabric, and she does have background fabrics also. And On Point Dash TV and Quilting with Nancy. So please go to the Facebook page. On our Facebook page, after you find it, like it so that you'll be able to see whenever we do any postings or anything. Put where you are from so that I know where you're from. And next Saturday, June 20th, I'm going to do a drawing for two prizes. One prize will be for the Great Basics book. Whoops. Either, uh, okay, what a mess. Okay, you guys didn't see that, did you? Good, okay. You'll either get the Great Basics book, or if you're an international friend, then I'll send you the ebook so that you'll have that. Um, and then the second prize will be for one of my pin cushions. And keep in mind, when you purchase a pin cushion kit, you can choose the color you want, okay? And then we've decided, Athena's always coming up with these great ideas, that we're going to give away one of the Learning to Quilt books also. Now, this is the larger book, the first one that I wrote, that does this entire quilt that you see that's got all of the different techniques on it. The paper piecing and squares and half square triangles and applique, you name it, it does it. We do have an entire series on the YouTube channel also for this. So, if when you're on Facebook and you got to wait until we post this video on Facebook, you want to put in the comments section not only where you're from, but also share the video. If you will share the video to your page, those people that share the video will go into a drawing for the Learning to Quilt book. So I think only one prize per person. And again, if you're an international customer, then I will send you the ebook version of the Learning to Quilt. So remember, we want to get you onto Facebook so I can communicate more so that you can share with me the projects that you make. You can share with everybody the projects that you make. I just think that's what the quilting world is all about. We like to share. We like to create. We like to see what other people are doing, especially now when so many of us are not able to get together with our quilt guilds and our quilt bees and go to our favorite quilt shops all the time. Now's the time to start sharing a little bit more on the internet. And that's it. I think that's the end of our post. Athena, were there any questions I needed to answer? She's saying, no, there is not. If there are, you can send me an email. My email is quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. Really easy to remember. All of my books and pincushions are available on the On Point Dash TV website. Please like this video. Please give us a thumbs up, comment. Um, and I think that's about it. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.